Hello everyone, it's John from Double Sleeved here and welcome to a Commander Legends preview roundup from the first day and we have got about 15 cards to talk about from yesterday's preview releases uh, and we will kick things off with Tevesh Zvat, Doom of Fools a Planeswalker no less for 4 loyalty for 4 and a black We've got three abilities, plus two, create two zero one black thrall creature tokens. A plus one, you may sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. If you do draw two cards, then draw another card if the sacrifice permanent was a commander. And then minus ten, gain control of all commanders. Put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. So, a bit of uh, token generation. Getting it up to six loyalty, which is pretty strong. Um, a bit of sacrifice to draw cards. Um, especially good if you've stolen something, so a little bit of, of nicking people's commanders and things. And then at the very end, you've got that kind of big take everyone's commander um, and have them for your own. Uh, another extra layer, which is something we're going to see a lot in this set, is Tevesh Savat, Doom of Fools, can be your commander. And partner so this can be one of your two commanders it can be your commander as it is or it can be one of two commanders if you need the color black within your commander um, deck this is a great option to add to another different colored uh, commander partner we're going to see lots of that in um, commander legends i'm going to make some assumptions that you're aware of what commander legends is being a sort of draft set for commander for the first time but mainly it being a great source of cards for commander in general we won't be going through any reprints uh, in this video although have seen some great reprint announcements um so this should just be all the new cards that have been announced blade griff prototype a 5 generic for a 3-2 artifact creature griffin with flying. Whenever blade griff prototype deals combat damage to a player, destroy target non-land permanent of that player's choice that one of your opponents controls. So it's a way of, if I hit you, you can destroy whatever you want. You can't destroy any of my stuff. They could destroy their own thing, but it may be a little bit of teaming up going on. I think this card's interesting and will make for interesting draft play, but I don't think necessarily it's going to be particularly good in a, uh, a, a competitive commander um, kind of format. Feels a little bit like uh, you have to jump through too many hoops. If it's just it deals combat damage, you can destroy a permanent maybe, uh, but the fact that you've kind of got to say, let this go through, you get to choose. I guess that person's got the, the choice then to say, if I take you know take three damage, destroy a permanent. But yeah, it just feels like Will it work that way? I don't know. I don't know. But cool, cool card. I like it. Briar Blade Adept. Four and a black for a three four elf assassin. Whenever Briar Blade Adept attacks, target creature and opponent controls get minus one, minus one till end of turn. Uh, and it has the encore three and a black. So for three and a black, exile this card from your graveyard. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn. If able, they gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, activate only as a sorcery. So this is a um, a neat little uh, extra encore mechanic uh, where you can basically just make a bunch of these attacking um, from the graveyard, in essence, um, attacking one opponent, which means they would trigger the um, the Adept's extra ability um, three times, which means you could give one target creature minus three, minus three, or you could give three minus one, minus ones to different creatures, etc, etc. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, I think Encore is obviously a uh, strong and powerful thing. Attacking for nine, dealing minus three, minus three to something or a combination of things is strong. Um, five is quite high, just as is, but it's a common, so... Another of our partner commanders, um, Brynlin the Mooncracken, for 6 blue blue. It's a 6-8 legendary creature Kraken. So this is 8 mana, 
when Brian Lynn the Mooncracken enters the battlefield, or whenever you cast a spell with converted mana cost 6 or greater, you may return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. I'll be honest with you, I I think this is a... It's, a, it's an uncommon. Um, I think this is a, I want blue in my commander deck. Um, I'm going to have this uh, in combination with another commander, and I'm going to play this kind of late game if I have the mana and need to. Uh, I don't think casting a, an 8 mana 6 8 that bounces something is very good at all. Um, it's Yes, it's non-land permanent, not just creature, but it really isn't. You know, filling your deck with, with six and greater spells is just such a hoop to jump through. Maybe it'll work okay in draft, but um, it's it, you're not going to have many of those kinds of cards in your um, in your commander deck, especially not in blue. It doesn't necessarily ramp particularly well. So, um, but interesting card. Another blue partner on the other end of the spectrum, Ghost of Ramirez de Pietro. Pietro? Apologies. Um, this is an MTG Goldfish translation, so it may or may not be um, entirely accurate, uh, but it is a two and a blue, um, so two thirds. Um, two thirds? What am I talking about? Two thirds? Wow, that was uh, a te terrible bit of uh, <laughs> of reading. <laughs> two, it's a two three um, spirit pirate, two thirds. Oh dear. Ghost of. I assume that this is definitely not what it is, but that's what they've called it. Uh, the ghost can't be blocked by creatures with toughness three or more. Whenever this ghost deals combat damage to a player, choose target card in a graveyard that has been discarded or put there from a library this turn. Put that card into its owner's hand. So I like the fact that this is a two power, three toughness, can't be blocked by something with, more than, with three or more toughness, um, and you can... Bring something back from the graveyard into the library, which is a bit odd. Um, and only uh, this turn. So, sorry. Um, no, it goes back into the hand from... So if it's gone from the library... So if it's milled, basically, is what we're saying. Um, or gone into the, the graveyard, then... Um, yeah, it's... Uh, some conditions. But... Maybe you've got some self-mill and it's a good way of getting something uh, back into your hand. Um, but more importantly, again, it's a 3-mana 2-3 two, that can't be blocked, that's a commander partner, so has use for sure. Crark the Thumbless. 1 and a red for a 2-2, two, two, not 2 over 2, 2-2, two, two, legendary creature, goblin wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return the spell to its owner's hand. If you win the flip, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. And it's a partner. So, this card, very interesting. There's been videos already out about it, um, around what you can do with it. The fact that you get the cast trigger, obviously when you cast the instant or sorcery spell, means that this, um, it returning to your hand, if it's like a one mana, let's say it's a one mana red spell, shock or something you cast it if you, you get a whenever you cast an instant or sorcery trigger like what's on this card so you gain that benefit whatever it may be um then you either flip it and it says yep yeah, you can copy it so you get two shocks for the price of one or it goes back into your hand at which point you can cast it again. So you're basically getting a free trigger, or well not free trigger, it costs the mana, but you're getting a second usage of that spell. Um, so really interesting. Now, I've not looked at, in preparation for this video, how many cards there are out there that might let you, I don't know, change the flip, but um, or nullify that effect. I don't know. Um, but uh, I think if it's, a, uh, it's an interesting, funny, chaotic commander that you could definitely work some shenanigans around um but either way i think it's great again if you want to get into red it's two mana partner two two wizard lisa liesa shroud of dusk two white white black for a five five legendary creature angel 
So rather than pay two for each previous time you cast a spell from the command zone, this game pay two life that many times. So substituting that command attacks. Flying and lifelink, so you're kind of getting that lifelink to help with the, uh, with the paying two. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. So this immediately feels a bit like a stacks piece. It's penalizing a player, any player, for casting a spell, any spell. Um, this feels to me like life loss, life gain, combos. Whenever you lose life, X happens. You cast some spells, you get the combo off just by casting spells. Equally, it's pinging other people for casting spells. Um, and the lifelink on this obviously will help being a 5-5 flyer. Um, it's not a partner, obviously, because it's two colours. Um, Orzov, you know, works well with that kind of um, pay life, lose life, gain life kind of kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's not, it's not amazing, I don't think. It's cool. I think definitely some things you can do with it. Not the most powerful colours necessarily, but definitely things you could do with that. I'd be interested to see some workarounds for that card. Maelstrom Colossus. Eight generic for a 7-7 seven, seven artifact creature golem with Cascade. Which, as a reminder, is when you cast a spell exile card from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less, which less than eight is obviously significant. You may cast it without paying its mana cost, but the exile cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. So whether we'll see a huge amount of cascade cards in this set, probably, maybe, who knows? Um, but you know, when you're casting something for eight and then getting a free cast of something else, you want that whole stacking the top of your library shenanigans so that the next card you you have on the top of your library is a seven mana or something, maybe even with cascade itself. And you get this huge cascade of cards um, where you're casting things for free over and over again. Works well with uh, the Maelstrom Wanderer, I think it's called. Um, the the Commander Potential that has double cascade on it. Uh, definitely a fun card. Um, would need to be in part, part of a combo, otherwise it's just kind of is what it is. An 8-mana eight, an eight 7-7 seven, seven generic golem artifact isn't necessarily the best thing. Mnemonic Deluge. Six blue, blue, blue. Nine mana for this mythic sorcery. Exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard. Copy that card three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana cost. Exile Mnemonic de Deluge. So we're saying you cast this for, for, for nine mana. You pick a, an instant or sorcery from any graveyard and you're going to get three copies of that. So somebody's just cast, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, um, an extra turn spell of some description, um, or a big damage dealing spell, or a, a, a big stealing creature spell, or whatever it may be. This You get the, that three times for nine mana. At that point, this is a great card. It's one of those where I expect when you cast it, you win the game. It's going to be one of those sort of new um, nine mana kind of absolutes, you know? Um, and if there's a way of getting this to be cast for free, then, you know, cra crazy, again, crazy shenanigans. Um, obviously, coupling this with the, um, the thumbless goblin, potentially getting double trigger off of <laughs> doing something six times. Uh, you know that kind of thing, but this, this is a nine mana is mental. That's a lot of mana. The likelihood of you getting this, having it, having nine mana open, who knows? Um, when it gets countered by one or two mana counter spells, um, but the fact that it can, yeah, almost instantly win you the game. Is, is it worth it? Maybe. Nimris Una's trickster. Another MTG Goldfish translation, so again, a uh, pinch of salt with some of the names and bits and bobs within it. Three blue black for a 1-6 legendary feature Fairy Knight. Flash flying, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and one of them in your graveyard. So you've got a kind of, um, you've got a 1-6 for five, so real defensive, with flash, so looking for a flash deck and flying, which is, you know, always helpful. And you're casting spells on the opponent's turn, or your instants and all your flash spells. Um, you're looking at two cards, you put one in your hand and one into your graveyard. So 
good in terms of card draw and also graveyard um, synergy. Um, yeah, you'd have to really build well for this to work. Um, Demir likes the graveyard, likes flash, got no problem with that. Um, but would definitely need you to really know what you're doing. We're going to see as the set gets spoiled properly um, what kind of synergies there are. Um, but graveyard normally is one anyway. But it's whether or not flash is going to be big enough. Who knows? But still, that's a cool card. This is an interesting one. Rebeck, Architect of Ascension. Three and a white for a 3-4 legendary creature human artificer. Artifacts you control have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control. So a two mana artifact that you have on the board has protection from two. Yeah, CMC two. I like this card, and I think that in an artifact deck, this is going to be mean. I've already looked at it as far as, like, I think that this will work in... Um, we've got a bit of an artifact deck going, a Brea. Uh, whether this will fit in a Brea deck, I don't know. Uh, but most probably, any artifact decks out there that, you know, you get a bunch of different CMC'd artifacts. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, you know, you name it. Uh, it becomes protection is mean when you have enough of it. Um, so, yeah, I think um, you get a bunch of that out on the board. It's a lot of caveats, but I think it's a, it's a nice one. And again, it's just good in terms of being a white partner to pair up with another colour. Seraphic Greatsword. One and a white for a mythic artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two. Okay. Whenever a equipped creature attacks the player with the most life or tied for most life, create a 4 4 white angel creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking that player. It has an equip cost of four. So six mana gets you plus two, plus two, but you only need to attack. And you, the whoever's got the most life, as long as it isn't you, obviously, and you get a 4-4 four, four angel also attacking. So, in essence, you're gaining 6 power, 6 toughness, 4-6, if it just attacks once. I think the equip cost 4 is high, um, but play this on 2, equip it on 4 maybe, or um, play an equip on 6 and you're gaining yourself that flying blocker, or, well, Initially, flying attacker. In equipment decks, yeah, it's a good one. Um, especially anything that can equip for free becomes, yeah, pretty good. It's going to go in my um, my knight deck. Uh, but yeah, a, a, uh, an interesting one for sure. Two mana, equip for four. Works with the most recent Nahiri. Yeah, it's okay. Siani's Eye of the Storm, a three and a blue for a three two, not. Um, three halves. Uh, legendary creature Jin Monk. It's got flying, and whenever Siani Eye of the Storm attacks, scry X, where X is the number of attacking creatures with flying. So flying synergy um, only needs to attack, but it needs lots to attack with it, and you're getting a scry out of it. Um, you're going to need to scry a number of times for this to be worth it. A, a flying 3 2 for 4 is, uh, is okay. You don't want to argue with that. Um, if you've got a bunch of flyers, then even better. Um, obviously, it's got the partner mechanic, so you can pair this with something else. Um, scrying can be really useful in terms of, like, if you can pair it with card draw, even better. Um, but, yeah, it seems like a pretty solid card. You're not going to be unhappy to have this, even if it's just scrying one when it attacks. You're not going to be unhappy to have that as a commander to play on turn four, if need be. Sphinx of the Second Sun. Six blue, blue. Lots of expensive blue um, cards. For a 6-6 six, six mythic creature, Sphinx, with flying, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase after this phase. Lots of word phase being used there. And that just says the beginning phase includes the untap, upkeep, and draw steps. So, 8 mana. Let's just not get away from the fact this is an 8 mana 6-6 six, six flyer. It's expensive. Like, How often are you going to cast this? Now, what you want is this to be not cast. This is a, a go and find it, cheat it out in some way, a uh, bit of a bomb. 6-6 six, six flyer, yep. What it gives you is 
you fight combat at the beginning of your your next main phase you get a new untap upkeep draw so untapping all your lands getting all your upkeep triggers drawing sick combos out there i'm sure uh, and then you get another main phase because you need your actual um, post-combat main phase um definite shenanigans it's just eight mana is a lot and i think unless you've got a really clear plan of how you're going to get this out casting it for eight just seems like it's not going to happen um but definitely something that if you can get it out it's going to be uh really influential especially with any kind of combo with it um yeah really really powerful card sats will sat uh, four and a black for a, an instant spell. Choose one. If you control your commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. So that's sort of paying you off for having your commander out. Each opponent sacrifices a creature they control with the greatest power. So you're getting a bit of a, a selective board wipe for everyone else. And or, depending on if you've got your commander out, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards, create X01 Black Thrall creature tokens where X is the greatest power among creature cards exiled this way. So you just blanket wipe everyone's graveyards and gain yourself potentially a large number, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whoever, who knows, um, Black Thrall creature tokens. Great for sucking or blocking or whatever. Um, and it's instant speed, which I like. Five mana is quite expensive, but if you've got your commander out, I think that then works. I mean, you imagine casting this um, with your commander out and your opponent who's potentially attacking you or maybe, you know, looking to block has then, they're faced with getting rid of the biggest thing and then a, a, an army of these zero ones. And we're back to start. So there you go. That is what was released um, on the 26th, uh, the first day of these um, previews, we're going to try and do a bit of a video every day, we'll see how we get on, um, if there's enough to talk about. Uh, let me know if there's other things you want to know as we go through this. If you like the video, like it, subscribe, why not? Um, and there'll be more content as, uh, as time goes on. So, can't wait for this set, really excited for it, I hope you guys are too. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.